Hi everyone, welcome back to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to new ER nurses. Today, we will be going over a simple yet very important topic. What clinical skills should you master as an ER nurse? And the point of this video is to give you a draft of skills that you should be working on through your preceptorship when you're training with your preceptor. Things you should be keeping at the back of your mind that you should be attempting to reach proficiency and eventually master so that when you are by yourself as a nurse, you will feel more confident and self-empowered. Sure that your preceptor is going to have a thorough outline or checklist in regards to the skills that they want you to master or at least get a really good understanding and uh, comprehension of. But if they don't, I hope that my list at least helps you, guides you in the right direction. So with the first one, there's a saying in regards to it, or there's a lot of memes too, but it's that ER nurses, that all that ER nurses do is draw blood and put IVs in, right? So it's kind of true because when a really sick patient comes in, you really can't do anything without having IV access. You can't give life-saving medications, you can't give fluids, you can't resuscitate your patient or even draw labs without having good IV access in. So yes, a lot of the memes are true, right? But Placing IVs is just more than simply placing IVs, right? It's a very difficult skill, especially when you have really sick pediatric patients or adult patients or elderly patients or obese patients or ex-drug users or dialysis patients. The list keeps going on and on, and the skill itself gets more and more difficult. For example, does your facility allow you to place an external jugular IV? You're going to learn to place IVs in the AC, the forearm, and hands relatively easily, but what about the fingers, the feet, on the shoulder, on the axilla, even on the abdomen or even on the forehead, right? When sick patients comes, come in and you need labs, you need to get IV access in order to give these medications and these fluids, you're going to do whatever you can, wherever you can to get an IV and uh, save your patient, right? And then with this go also, you're going to need to become comfortable with the butterfly needers only when you're going to just be drawing blood. And then also with get, getting arterial blood, right? So doing an arterial stick. You will be doing that for getting ABGs, but at the same time, there's been moments where I've had to do that, of course, with the provider's order in order to just get a blood sample if the patient just has no other type of access. So continuing on, I want you to also become familiar with your crash car, especially how to defibrillate, how to cardiovert, and how to use the pacer. So this includes which buttons to press, how to select an energy level, and how to charge the machine in combined with other stuff, right? But it also means placing the pads right, placing the ECG leads on for pacing and so forth. Next, you need to become comfortable with using a central line, with using a pick line and with accessing a porticath. This also means, this also includes changing their dressings and even troubleshooting when they're not working. Next, I want you to become comfortable with using an arterial line with how you're going to interpret the waveform, with how you're going to zero the line, which way to turn all the knobs, and how to obtain an ABG from the line itself. Next, it's going to be becoming comfortable with an intubated patient, knowing how to suction, knowing all the parts, not being scared of and not understanding the vent, how to disconnect the patient from the, from the vent, and how to bag him yourself, right? How to connect that. And then recognizing the alarms and kind of just becoming comfortable with having an intubated patient, especially when you're turning them, when you're in there, just being comfortable. Also, becoming comfortable with the patient who is trait, knowing what to do um, if the patient suddenly becomes short of breath or if it like suddenly just comes out. And also, you can have patients who are trait that are coming into the ER that are just extremely short of breath. What are the steps that you should be taking for these patients? Next, it's going to be becoming comfortable with your facility's rapid blood transfuser, knowing what tubing is needed and how to just make it work. Closely tied to this is knowing how to administer blood products like PRBCs, platelets, FFP, which tubing to use, how fast, and how to make it run through the rapid transfuser, right, for those real true emergencies. And then tied along that is going to be becoming familiar with your massive transfusion protocol specific to your facility. And then next, I also want you to learn about the Minnesota or Blakemore tubes, knowing when they are used and how to manage them as the nurse. Okay, let's keep on going to the list. So next is going to be placing an IO, including the sites and the procedure itself. 
And then going back to the essentials, I'm sure you already know how to do this, but if you don't, it's also okay. So learn how to check a blood sugar. Does it have to only be from pricking the fingers? Could you also get a sample from the blood you just drew? Or are there any other ways to do it? Next, learn how to accurately and rapidly place a patient on the cardiac monitor and pulse oximetry. What if the pulse ox isn't reading on the fingers? Could you place it on the ears? How would you do this? Next, learn how to take an EKG, including a right-sided EKG and a posterior EKG. Next, which is more of a knowledge point, but also a skill, begin to try to recognize the important EKG rhythms and learning how to um, identify specifically like STEMIs, and STEMIs, um, SVT, AFib, RVR, those very important rhythms that, are, uh, that we see in the ER that are true emergencies, right? Next, for pediatric patients, I want you to learn how to use the Braslaw tape. And if you don't have one, I want you to get one. And then next, you're going to deal with a lot of Foley's. So learn how to place them correctly, how to be efficient and how to do it fast, but doing them right, how to irrigate a Foley, how to provide continuous irrigation, how to use a QD, which is more of a less flimsy version, and then how to use a bladder scanner and then learn how to do all these things for uh, a pediatric patient as well, right? And then also learn how to place an NG tube or OG tube, and then learn how to perform a gastric lavage through this NG tube as well. Okay, so we're almost done, but stay focused because every single thing that I've mentioned, I've had to do in the last month. So someday when you're a nurse as well, and you're fully on your own, you're going to be doing these too. So let's keep going learn how to manage an EVD, specifically, again, which way to turn all the knobs to zero it and how to check the output, learn how to manage chest tubes, including assisting with the placement and what to do if it prematurely comes out on accident. Next, learn to place a patient on a nasal cannula, on a non rebreather how to use a bag valve mask, learn how to insert an OPA and an and then NPA, learn how to give breathing treatments and get the and get to know your RTs because they have a lot to teach us and they may teach you a lot of different uh, tips and tricks as well. Next, um, although I'm sure, again, you know how to do this, but perhaps you may have never done it yourself on an actual patient, learn how to perform a jaw thrust. It's useful, especially in procedural sedations. A patient will uh, be out from the medications we give them and they'll just need a simple jaw thrust. So learn how to do that. Next, learn how to place a patient on end tidal uh, CO2 monitoring. Learn to become comfortable with a BiPAP and CPAP as well, knowing what the contraindications are and how to just turn it off. Um, and next, learn how to recognize all the intubation equipment that's used in the ER. Example, a laryngoscope, a uh, glidoscope, a Miller versus a Macintosh blade. Uh, what's the difference between the bougie and the stylet? You want to know that kind of stuff. And also a cuff. What does cuff versus uncuffed mean? And you want to know all these supplies because in an in intubation situation, you may be asked, oh, hey, can you get this for me? Hey, can you get that for me? You want to know exactly what's, what's, what's needed and what's being asked of you to make everything flow more uh, smoothly. So we're almost done, but let's keep going. Learn how to place a cervical collar, a knee immobilizer, a sling, and how to provide education for crutches, know how to give meds besides just PO and IV, including IM medications, where are, where are all the different IM locations that we can give a med, and how much to give, uh, what's the max that we can give at each location, know how to give sub subcutaneous medications, the locations, and then also learn how to give intranasal medications, right? Because that's also used um, not as frequent, but it can also be, the, it can also be very useful to know uh, how to give intranasal medications. And then learn how to how to remove stitches and how to remove staples. Learn how to change a colostomy back. Learn how to assess for GCS and an NIH, which is very important in the ER. And then finally, know what supplies are needed for a central line, a chest tube, an arterial line, any procedure that can be life saving. You want to know what supplies are needed so you can get it ready quickly and kind of make help the team be more proactive. Now let's get into the question of the day. What is the more what is a major complication you should worry about when correcting patients with hyponatremia? 
Again, what is the major complication you should worry about when correcting patients with hyponatremia? As always, you know, pause for a second, think about it, see if you know the answer. And if you don't, or if you want to just make sure it's the right answer, uh, go to the bottom of the description text. And then again, thank you for today. If you enjoyed the video and learned something from the content today, I would really appreciate a like and a follow or kind of share it with your friends, your other new ER nurses. Um, and then also below in the description, I've listed my favorite ER re nursing related books. And then uh, maybe you're going to like them too, right? I think that being a good ER nurse depends a lot on your experiences, but it also depends on taking the time to look up things that you don't know, to keep on studying, to keep on familiar familiarizing yourself with topics because you're going to be placed in situations where it's going to count that you know what you're doing, right? Um, so as always, keep learning. And then teamwork makes the dream work here at Emergency Chaos because we are proactive and not reactive, right? 